So hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Ignite podcast. Uh, today, I'm being joined by Ed and Dan. Gents, welcome to the call. Josh, how are you? Hey, Josh. Good to have you. So lads, um, let's let's dive in. Like, I'm super keen to hear about the journey. Trademark, uh, TX, if I pronounce that correct, correctly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, where I want to start the convo is, yeah, give us, give us a bit of a spiel on the journey and, and probably more specifically, um, like I know your background's construction, uh, heaps of time there, 10 hour days, 12 hour days. What was the spark that sort of ignited uh, where you are now? Um, okay, right. So I'll field this one. I'll preface. I always try to be like, right, I'm going to try and move through this quickly. Never happens. Um, and, but there's kind, of, <laughs> there's kind of so many elements. So I'll try to keep it as succinct as possible. Concise. Uh, yeah. Concise, yeah, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, basically, yeah, no, I met on a building site together, um, working for a builder together. Um, the same day we started, I was a tradie. I was just starting out his apprenticeship. That's uh, basically where we forged our relationship. We got lumped with each other from day dot. Um, Ed yep. from Long Beach, myself from Sydney, but, but wouldn't have been too many other reasons why two blokes like us would become mates, but we we're just lucky to end up on a site together. So that's basically where we forged our mateship and our relationship built on, you know, a, similar, a common sense of humour and, and a common work ethic as well. We used to work seven days a week together um, during those times. We'd, we'd knock off um, after working for our builder and do cashies of the night time and cashies on the weekend as well. Um, we started to, you know, at a point in time there, actually just think, well, maybe if we put our heads together, we could pull our cash together rather than pissing it up the wall and we could, you know, maybe maybe, maybe start something. So that was kind of our mentality around that time. Um, 2015 um, was the um, yeah, the year that I lost one of my best mates to suicide. Um, tragically, um, in December that year, and that, that was my first experience with suicide and Ed as well, both myself being, you know, one of, losing one of my best mates, he wasn't a mate of Ed's, but Ed was my number one support network at the time. So we both experienced that in, in two quite different ways, but both equally profound. Mm -hmm. um, so that event happening um, and us working together at the same time and saving cash when you start something, that was kind of all going on at the same time. And we kind of had this idea. We thought, oh, geez, it'd be you know, great to wear something different to work. Why hasn't anyone done anything you know, in this workwear space? And, um, so we started to explore this idea of workwear. Um, and during that journey of exploring this funky workwear idea, we met some people along the way who introduced us to this idea of social enterprise and using profit for purpose. Um, and given, you know, the experience of losing a mate to suicide and where we're taking this work, where we kind of melded the two ideas together, or well, they naturally melded together. Um, and that became the start of, I guess, the, the, the journey. So basically, Ed and I became the founders of Trademunt, which is a, a social impact workwear company by tradies for tradies. We make funky eye-catching workwear designed to start conversations about mental health and, and as we say make an invisible issue impossible to ignore and in that four-year period from where we started we've gone from founding Trademark, the workwear company now Trademark is a full stack um, workwear company um, you know fully commercially capable and Ed and I've also gone on to found our own not-for-profit called TAX which is the acronym for this is a conversation starter yep. through which we provide free uh, early intervention, professional mental health support for tradies, truckies, rural and blue collar workers. So I told you it was long. But <laughs> it's it's nice. It's just like so it was, in there. we got 15 minutes left now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, was, that's pretty much it. Yeah, it was pretty concise. Yeah, it was, pretty, it? It was good. It was you good. did nail that. Um, yeah. There's only two breaths that I counted, so you've clearly practised that. Um, so, I mean, obviously... You, what you guys are doing is incredible for the industry. Um, and I guess, like, I'm curious to dive into the business elements in terms of how you grew things, like what worked for you, um, but also really want to focus too on, you know, what's next, what's your vision. Obviously, you're having an, uh, an impact and a difference. I think I saw a post from you guys recently. Um, can't remember the dollar figure, but it was some insane amount of dollars worth of mm -hmm coaching calls or, or support calls that you guys have sort of assisted the economy with or individuals with. So mm -hmm. um, probably what I, what I want to start with is, yeah, what's been instrumental in the growth of your business? Like what have you sort of found has worked really well? Because obviously uh, like I've been there, you know, a startup, no one knows you and you've got a cool idea, right? But like how did you in the early days get your idea out there and start to generate traction and, and um, a following? 
and making mistakes worked really well for us. Yeah. Uh, Plenty of them. Um, yeah, that seems to be a common theme. Um, so yeah, like you are um, right though. Um, I think yeah, learn like biggest things obviously learning from our mistakes, but also I think what we've been really fortunate of is um, yeah, commitment to drive and, and a central ethos for cause and why we're doing it. Um, so like I reckon if the social impact side of things wasn't in our business, like I reckon we definitely probably would have fucking shut the gate on it. You know, probably a couple of times to be honest, because yep. there have been some yeah major hurdles that have that have taken place, and without that sort of central ethos of of the social impact um, that we've always all, always wanted to make and are now making, yeah, I, I reckon probably hand on heart, it, it would have been times when we th- thought, yeah, this is this is way too much. Um, but with that as a, as a driving force, we've been able to adapt and continually push through. And you know, I've I've got a very strong belief that. Um, yeah, trademark will always exist as long as Dan and I, um, you know, rock up to work every day. Uh, we'll always find a way out um, of any situation we find our, ourselves in. And um, we also know now, like Dan was saying, you know, where we fit in the market. Like when we first started, we just had three full print work shirts, you know. Um, it took us nearly two years to get a high vis garment into into works because there was just so many you know competitors out in the space that were making garments that weren't compliant and we're like well shit we're not going to make a garment that's non-compliant because if something happens well then that's us that's curtains so we need to make sure we're rigid dig um yep. so that yeah it took us sort of two years of back and forth with suppliers and um testing um places and everything like that to get that into play um and then you know working with the mistakes again of bringing out products that didn't weren't our market fit right and i suppose we're lucky we made those mistakes early and learnt from that um so we didn't make a bigger mistake down the track when we had more working capital in you know in, invest more money into it so it's those sorts of things that we've learned along the way and now knowing that we're a total worker and uniform solution for industry um is, is super important us sticking to that um, sort of lane and then yep. obviously ensuring that we're commercially viable to uh you yeah, know continue to support obviously our full-time um alliance partnership with tax as, as a top tier alliance partner so we fund one full-time mental health clinician what i want to take the convo lads is like um there's actually three things that you guys have sort of highlighted on it's uh your north star in terms of like you know that sort of thing that keeps you going um and keeps keeps you driving forward uh, relationship with failure um, and, and I'm, I'm curious about the PR piece so was that like a conscious decision for you guys like in terms of holy crap we've got something we believe in it how are we going to get it out there um, or is that something that came to you through combos with other people so total accident so yeah um, Ed and I wore our first approved work shirt samples out to our weekly shareholders meeting that we used to have at the Newstead uh, pub here in Brisbane yep. um, on a Thursday afternoon. And yeah, it's the first time we'd worn the shirts out. And there were, oh, but I think it, as we tell the story, it was about six different people who came up to us in the pub that day and were like, wow, what's the deal with these shirts? And Ed and I were kind of looking at each other going, this is funny. Fucking hell, like they're actually doing, like they're actually doing what we thought, like what they're intended to do. So that happened, and the last bloke who came up to have a chat with us about these shirts happened to be an editor from uh, the Quest magazine, which is a little rag paper in the Courier Mail here. And he said, "Oh, this is really cool. I'd love to do a story about you." Yeah. And we kind of looked at each other and were like, "Righto, no worries, mate. It's your career, so uh, <laughs> let's do it." So, I would yeah. love to know what that conversation actually like how it fully went. I oh, know, and so yeah, so we ended up. Um, taking a few photos with a professional photographer in, in, in New Farm Park in the same two shirts, the only two shirts that we had that, you know, we probably had to wash and dry and continue to wear a thousand times. And, yeah, before that story went to print, somehow Channel 7 got a hold of it as well and contacted Ed and they said, you know, hey, we've you know, seen your story in Quest magazine. This is awesome. We'd love to put you on the news. And, um Ed said, oh, awesome, when? And they were like, 6 p.m. tonight. And we were like, shit. <laughs> um, we didn't even have the website, wasn't live yet. We hadn't placed our orders in China. So we spent the afternoon scrambling around trying to pull everything together, which we did just in a nick of time. Channel 7 came out, did a story. The story, we just, we look at it, we look back on it and we're like, God, we look like such idiots. But, you know. <laughs> That happened and they put us on the news and yeah, it just it just snowballed from there. That little snippet, that story on, on social media went viral around um Queensland and then around Australia and um yeah, we were we were cash flow positive in about a week. Um and wow. 
Yeah, and we've been we've been deep in the trenches ever since. <laughs> so fun, like people still ask, like, are you still on the tools? And it's like it, it blows me away that people still think that we're that we're still working on the tools because like you, we don't have enough time in the day to get our daily jobs done. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. just wild how much we have to get done. But we just snuck um, in, we just snuck in twelve minutes before this podcast. Smashed yeah, had lunch. Yeah, smashed down a bit of sushi and keep going. So. And um, yeah, it's pretty hilarious though. Like it's 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 yeah. I don't I don't think um, yeah people understand just just how full on it is over here. Now. Like we've got you know, fifteen staff at Trademark. We've got fifteen yeah. staff over at TX. Like there's thirty people. You know that we, you know, directly employ. We're the, um, we're the, we're the co-founders of a mental health clinic, essentially. Well, we are, yeah, free one. We're both, we're both, you know, maxed out at certificate three in carpentry. Or you know, an insurance company laughed at us. Yeah. when they were like, so who's running this? Yeah, thing? they they couldn't <laughs> believe that the insurance agency thought it was a cheat up that <laughs> right. that had a free text and call service to mental health counsellors that needed insurance, and they're like. No, like who are the actual directors? And they're like, no, no, these two guys. They're like, legit, it's us. Oh. Yep. Yeah, pretty yeah. hilarious. And so then, once you had that initial, like, obviously you fell into that. But then, did you go, well, holy crap, this PR thing actually works? Did you then mm-hmm. just leverage that more and keep going and and keep well, doing actually, that consciously? It, it sort of self like fulfilled, like it just kept rolling over. Um, so the first, the Channel 7 one came out, that was Queensland, then Sydney picked it up, they shared it, and then we were on ABC Radio, we were on um, yeah. Channel 7 for um, like a, what, that thing with um, Benji Marshall's wife, remember that? Yeah, 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 just sort of, just just sort sort of, of one on. bit of PR led to the next and the next, yep. and, um, um, yeah, it sort of just rolled on like that, and then throughout the time, um, throughout the journey, we have intentionally done things to leverage PR um, again, yep. just to get back in the spotlight for whatever reason. Because any opportunity for PR is great for sales and great for um, great for awareness and great for you know everything that we're trying to do. So um, yep. yeah, PR has been instrumental in helping us get to where we are. And um, yeah, I honestly don't know how we would have done it otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah right. Um, LinkedIn. What works well for you guys too, or you're on other platforms? LinkedIn works yeah. great. You're, you, you're lucky enough to be joined today by the king of LinkedIn. <laughs> so. Ladies no, and gentlemen. I, I'm, um, yeah, I'm obsessed with LinkedIn. I think it's the greatest thing, um, yeah, since last but I don't have any other social media except LinkedIn. Um, yep. And I just think it's the, yeah, greatest thing going around, the ability to connect up with people um, about real things and support one another with, with different business things. Like I've had lots of people reach out um to us you know asking for you know support in regards to like business and then also other organizations that want to support our business which is epic and it's just yep. like great great community of people um they're all fairly like-minded and um yeah linkedin's been really really good for us because it gives a lot of goodwill to the brand through the people that are engaging with our content too and uh, yep. sharing our content um which is has been yeah, really powerful talk to me now um I want to switch gears a bit. Tell me about your relationship with failure and how that sort of uh, evolved over time, and how you sort of approached failure as you grow things. Well, we never we've never really been scared of it, which in a weird way. Like, and like we were talking to um, uh, we had dinner with a guy the other day from Sydney, um, who's part of a pretty big sort of organisation, and we we're talking about how like we didn't have an ego. And then he said, like, the irony is that that is the ego, and I suppose that's what sort of weirdly played along our our ability to just have a go because like we just had the blinkers on you know like we there was no I don't think we even considered the like the that it would ever not work like it was just we we're just gonna have we're just gonna make it work like no matter yeah. what it was there's always been things that we've feared may fail but that hasn't stopped us from having a go at it um like even you know our, our buying and procurement team like I mean there's it's three three um, buyers um, in our team and, and there's a, like a full-time fashion designer now. Um, like there's four ladies down there that just manage all of our stock coming um, and they cannot get it, like understand how we possibly got our first orders here. Like they just can't fathom how we did it. And I probably can't really either because it just we just had to make it work, right? The other thing is as well is that when you talk about our relationship with failure, I actually don't even know if that's like the right way to even phrase it for us because I don't feel like we've 
necessarily failed anything. I feel like along the entrepreneurial journey in the, in the, you know, just the business owner journey, it's just every day is a new challenge. Like every yep. day is a new problem that you're faced with and the whole thing's problem solving. Um, and I think as long as you've got, well, for A, having a wingman is like, you, I, can't. I don't know how people start businesses on their own. Fuck that. <laughs> having someone in the trenches with you is, is in, in, in this case, like vital because I just, I don't think either of us could, could do it without the other. No. But I think, yeah, in terms of facing the problems that you face every day, it feels like almost anything that you come up against in business can be solved as long as you've got the hunger and the tenacity and the drive to figure out what those solutions are. I think the day that you don't have that appetite to solve those problems or to overcome the next hurdle, then you might be staring down the, the, the face of, of, of failure. Or, but even then, it might not be failure. It might just be giving up. You know what I mean? Like, yep. I think every, every problem you face can be handled. It's just that, that willpower and the resilience to, to, to get on with things. So. Yeah, for sure. And I think that sort of represents, I guess, the mindset that you guys appear to have approached it with. Like Carol Dweck, who wrote this book, um, I think it's called The Growth Mindset, is all about, you know, the difference between people. People with a fixed mindset just go, well, this is who I am. This is my lot in life. I can't change it. Um, whereas people with a growth mindset have got, you know, I'm always changing. I'm always growing. Every problem is an opportunity for me to learn and grow. Yeah. Um, and if you approach life, business, everything in that in that framework, you're right, mate, like, it's not really failure. It's just like, no, crap, that happened. Okay, well, how do I get over it? How do I learn from it? And how do I move forward? It's that's asking questions. That sounds, that sounds like me with my Google calendar. It's just not me. But oh. I'm giving it everything. I'm just, I'm <laughs> that, is a gro- that is a slow growth mindset. That's a, it's still a seedling, that growth I'm mindset. giving it everything. No way, that's a hard, mate, hard. Yeah, I'm mate, like, that's a tree, mate. I'm hard on it. I'm <laughs> like, it's just not, it's not naturally me, but fuck me, I'm going to make it work. <laughs> yeah. But it is, it is funny. Um, so, well, not funny. Like, we're very fortunate that we do have that mindset. And, like, it's not something that we, yeah, we're like, we need to have this. It's like we just had it, you know. Yeah. We've been willing to ask questions and reach out to people and, do I suppose, do the do the things that most other people don't feel comfortable sort of doing, whereas we were like, oh, yeah, we're two dickhead carpenters that have got this, you know, weird idea. Fucking, what do you think? And do you know anyone that can help us? And we do have a couple of mantras that has carried us through, to be honest. Um, And I think it is poignant, like even back in the days when we were working seven days a week together, saving cash to start a business that we didn't know we were going to start. We used to say to each other, you know, 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning when we'd rock up to a renovation together, when everyone else was probably just getting home from a big night out. Um, no one's doing what we're doing. Like yeah. we used to say that to each other, and that would get us through. <laughs> and then the other one, I think that we say a lot to each other is when you're up against the challenges. Is like, well, would you rather be doing this, or would you rather be out shoveling concrete? And yeah, it's like, well, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. The air comes actually yeah. pretty good, and this computer, um, <laughs> yeah, you don't have to bend down to use it. And those two mantras, honestly, like I don't think we've actually given them as much credit as what they deserve because those two phrases have come out of our mouth both of our mouths that many times in different situations um and i think yeah that's it's a good one to get you through unknowingly it's helped us helped us a lot yeah and i think that like leads into nicely around like the convo i want to have next is around sort of that north star like you have to have something that's driving you something that's pushing you um to make a difference to keep going because when stuff gets hard like it's you know you're like oh well maybe i'll just go get a day job or maybe i'll just go back to shoveling concrete so what what is that north star for both of you in terms of that thing that keeps you going there's a few different things like we've got a probably a range of things that are like central to where we're headed and i don't think i don't think any business should just have one thing that they're sort of heading towards because you probably lose sight of everything else that needs to take place so we read a really good book last year, um, Good to Great by Jim Collins. So I'm yep. sure you read it. Um, and, you know, our hedgehog theory um, is, yeah, to, to find innovative ways to show that we care. And, you know, that's sort of an ethos that works through every aspect of our organisation, but not the customer success team. When someone rings up and says the button's fallen off a shirt they've had for 18 months, it's like, hey, have a new one. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Here you go. Um, or if we see someone in the, in the media that's been wearing one of our trademark shirts or someone that looks like a tradesperson, we'll just send them out a, a free gift and say, you know, keep doing great work. Um, right back to, you know, how we deal, um, you know, internally with our staff and making sure that they 
um, know that we care and find any ways to show there. So that's been really cool. And then um, sort of the, the three sort of main circles that we've got is obviously like we're deeply passionate about our community and ensuring that they're heard, understood, and we provide value to them. Um, the, the other other side of things is like what our like our economic driver is just brand awareness, so like the PR side of things. That's obviously what has fired us forward. Yeah. Um, and then outside of that, what we want to be the best in the world at is is just making procurement like easy, basically, and enjoyable. So uh, that's been a, a big focus for us, and probably one of the main parts of our north star is ensuring that everything that we're doing is making the process for people to procure our work where as easy as possible. Um, I think and- it's, all, it's also been like quite a work in progress for us because in the four years that we've been in business, we've evolved so much. What we were at the start is not necessarily what we are now. Yeah, of course. And I think when we kind of, when we say we tripped and stumbled into what we're doing now, obviously we were driving this idea, you know, to a certain degree and then opportunities presented themselves for us. But we're only just at a point now where we understand you know, what Trademart is as a business to make it sustainable long-term and what opportunities we've got in front of us. Um, and so, you know, we, we play in the mental health space. We also do a, we support a range of social causes like Sendable, our third-party uh, logistics provider, where we provide um, disability employment opportunities. Um, you know, we're, we're moving towards environmentally um, friendly practices. You know, we've got all these big, great ideas we want to implement into our business. And so Ed and I talk about it a lot. And I think ultimately what it comes back to for us is we've seen a lot like in the charitable space, I guess you could say, in this journey where it's there's kind of a bit of bullshit going on. There's so much wasted money and there's so much, there's so many inefficiencies in a lot of organisations. And I think we've got to this point where we both genuinely want to show the world that you can take commercial innovation applied to social enterprise business and make real long-term sustainable change that can also be profitable. Yeah. yeah. And that is what I think really drives us because we want to do so much more. Like our North Star isn't necessarily to reduce the rates of suicide by X amount or to do this or to do that. I think it really has come back to proving to the world that we can use business for good and that the only way forward is to genuinely use business for good. Mm. But when it's set up and structured correctly, it's more than sustainable. Yeah. And it's interesting, like that mindset is like when we first launched Trademark, like, you know, social impact um, and or enterprise businesses have, have been, you know, they're relatively a new concept, right? And like we're obviously, you know, 40 yeah. years in. So when we first started, people were like, what, you know, what, what does this mean? Like, are you giving all your money away? It's like, well, no, we can't give all our money away because how are we going to become, you know, commercially viable? And then it's sort of like, well, if you're a business to do good, and you've got to give all your money away, well, then are you saying that all other business is bad? Yeah. It's like, what, what is your mindset there? Like, if you if you want to do something socially conscious and good, it, you don't need to give all your money away and become a charity. You can do that by just being a workwear provider. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. You don't have to, you know, not all business is bad. Business can be good. So it's like, where's this mindset? It's just changing the, the culture and the understanding for, for organisations out there. And like a big thing for us, is obviously the transparency around what we do, where we invest our funds. And that's obviously into TAC, to the top tier alliance part of that costs us 120 grand a year yep. um, for a full-time clinician that we, we provide through TAC, which is really cool. And for a small little business, you know, four years in, 120 grand, like that's a that's a fair stack of coin, 10, 10 grand a month. Straight off the bottom line. I mean, yep. I know we could be, I know, you know, if we weren't donating that money there, we could definitely be using it to probably buy ourselves a little bit of extra time for a lunch break. <laughs> You know? Yeah, so it's 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 those it's those sorts of things, and, and making people understand that um, yeah, you can have a a really successful um, positive outcome in a business um, by being socially driven, but you've got to make sure it's commercially viable, and it's the same yeah. thing with our charity. So like our charity, Dan came up with this fucking awesome idea. Like well, must be like eight months ago now. He rang me on a Friday. He's like, "Oi." it needs to be a subscription-based model for our charity because previous to that, we were sort of like tin rattlers, you know, Trademark was donating money sort of every every quarter, which was a sporadic amount because we were doing like a percentage of our sales. And then we were just getting one-off donations from other corporate partners, which was awesome. And it got us to where we are, but it 
also didn't allow us a baseline of cash flow month on month. So we never knew how many clinicians we could hire. We weren't going to be able to easily scale. And we were pretty much like every other non-for-profit out there. And that's not why we launched TX. So Dan came up with the idea of why don't we as trademark fund one full-time mental health counsellor at TX. And then if we can do that, then why don't we just get more organisations in the blue collar industry to come on board and fund more? So that's what we did. So we put that together and it's fucking yeah, been awesome. And the thing to, I think the thing that has become more and more obvious, although we've known it all along, I guess, is that what we're trying to do is drive a shift in culture and attitude in the mental health space in Australia. Now, we're very fortunate in Australia to have access to some incredible, you know, private sector support, um, great, you know, a, a, a comparatively really good public health care system. Um, but my God, mental health care is expensive. Mm, uh, real expensive. There's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of social impact models out there where, you know, you might buy this toilet paper and it's and it's providing sanitation services in third world countries, or you might buy this camping gear and we plant these trees in other countries. Um, you know, so there's a lot of this social social impact model where you you purchase onshore in Australia, but the impact you create is somewhere else in the world where it's much, much cheaper to create that impact. We're focused obviously onshore and we're trying to fund free mental health support in Australia, which is yet yeah, really expensive. Yeah. Um, which is why it's obviously so difficult for the government or anyone to, to get it absolutely right because it's complicated and expensive. Um, so we are fully aware that we can't do it on our own. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no workwear company in the world that'd be big enough to support the scale in which we need to get TX to. So. But to the point of using profit for purpose business to make a genuine impact, we want to lead by example and mm. show that by collaborating together and adopting a similar mindset and model that collectively we can all make a difference. Yeah, 100%. That's awesome. Um, if you look back over your journey last four years, like what are you guys most proud of in terms of achievements? Uh, I like this. Uh, this is an easy one for me because um, I know what we've been through, the two of us. Yep. Um, the ups and downs, the roller coaster of emotions, the highs, the lows, all of it. Um, I'm obviously super proud of the organizations that we've built with TX and Trademark. But in amongst that, I'm, I'm most proud of the fact that we're the exact same two blokes that we were when we started this thing. We're not the same, actually. Our attitude with each other, our mateship is stronger. Our sense of humour is the same, but we're a lot better at. Hang on, we got intruder. Two sex, we two um, sex. We we are yeah, we've got an intruder, but we are a lot better at conflict re- resolution and communication than what we ever once were. Um, and so yeah, that for me is obviously the, the thing that I'm most proud of is the fact that through everything that we've done. We're still here, the same, same attitude, nothing's changed, you know? Yeah, awesome. same, absolutely. And I think just the, you know, the, the, the life that we um, have got ahead of us through the challenges we've applied to ourselves, like it was our choosing to make all of these decisions, right? Like we chose all of this to, to try and make a change, to start a business, to launch a charity, to hire people, to invest fucking millions of dollars into workwear. And, you know, like we chose all of this, but it's like it's set us up as individuals and as mates to really fucking conquer anything, you know what I mean? Like, you know, that, like our life will never be the same. Like we're never going to be those builders that are out, start a company and fucking are out quoting jobs and, like laying floors, like we're never going to be doing that now. Like we've completely transformed, you know, our trajectory and what we're going to do in our lives, which is like incredible because, fuck, in 2014 when we met, fuck, I'm sure both of us thought, well, this is going to be it until we're 60 yeah. and we may save up, buy a home, have a kid, you know, this will be it. But it's like now we're in this completely different world and it's just like so epic and it's so exciting because there's so much opportunity that we see, like, yeah, there's all this tech stuff we want to build and there's like all this other social change we want to make and it's like, fuck yeah, let's do this shit. Like we can do it, like why not? So that's what I'm, I'm so pumped about. And yeah, of course, like we've, we've still got each other and it's um, it's not going to change. That's so pretty awesome. No, nah, and like the connection you guys have looks like, yeah, you know, you want to do it with no one else, right? <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> um, lads, final question. So uh, if you look over the last 10 years, like your journey to date, uh, all the lessons that you've had, all the things that you've learned, all the things that you've done. Um, 
and you had the opportunity to sit down with a 10 year younger version of yourself, what sort of advice would you give them? Oh, I wrote this last night in a weird way. I haven't <laughs> actually showed Dan this yet. I had this weird shower thought last night. I got out of the shower, ran and wrote it down, right? And this is what it says. People, people who know everything don't, right? And people who want to learn everything will. Yeah, like, I thought I must have like read it somewhere. So I Googled it and I was like, is this this quote? Like, is anyone to, like, I couldn't find it on the internet. And I was like, fuck, I'm like, that is exactly what I should have known fucking 10 years ago. Like, yeah, people who know everything don't and people who want to learn everything will. I was like, that, fuck yeah, like, that is exactly. And that's what, yeah, like I've sort of, I've got, you know, buried into me now, which is great because I used to be the, you know, the, the prior of that, like the early part of that, like, like I thought I didn't know everything, you know what I mean? Yeah, for me, yeah. it's probably, for me, it's probably more along the lines of, um, I just staying the course, you know, when you apply yourself correctly and when you can truly say sort of within yourself that, you know, you are trying hard, you know, at your life and at making things work like you don't have to have all the answers if you just stay the course and you take every opportunity that comes your way as a stepping stone to take you on to the next thing things life has a funny way of of working out lining up but as long as you apply yourself you've got to give a little to get a little um, yeah. and within that journey there's one thing that's guaranteed is no one gets through unscathed it's just <laughs> there's no world that exists where you don't have challenges, you don't struggle with, you know, relationships, finances, grief, loss, you know, all of that. And it just doesn't exist. So there's no know, such thing as perfection. Yes. There's no doubt. S stay the course and have faith that, you know, and have fun. Little, give a little to get a little. So, yep. Yeah. Gents, love it. Um, look, that's all I, all the cues I had for you today. Where can people Thanks, follow along on your journey? Mate, you can check uh, check us out at trademut.com, T R A D E M U double T. I've always got to say that on the phone when I ring people. I'm like, from trademut, like, where? I'm like, trademut, M U double T. It's like, oh, yeah. Like a dog. Like a dog. And then, uh, and <laughs> TX. So, yeah, for anyone listening that wants to um, reach out to TX, um, yeah, Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Um, the, the phone number is 04 469 88. Uh, or you can see more at TIACS.org. Um, and yeah, thanks so much, Josh. Really appreciate uh, your time. No, guys, it's been awesome. Um, just want to say what you're doing is amazing. So uh, I haven't personally uh, experienced what you guys did in terms of um, 2015, but it is affecting the industry. So what you guys are doing is amazing. Thanks, man. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate really appreciate it. it. Thanks for your time, mate. Easy. Awesome. Thanks, lads.